Most horror movies' goals are to make you afraid of something that you encounter in everyday life. You take something like Jaws, it makes you afraid of the ocean, and it's something that anytime you get near the ocean, you cannot stop thinking about it. You look at a film like Child's Play, that movie takes dolls, and it makes you think like, are they looking at me now? You look at them in a different light. Something that you have never looked at as a threat before now seems to be a constant threat in the back of your mind, if only for, you know, a very, very quick second. This movie's aim is to make you afraid of companies like Uber or Lyft. And I think that they're fairly successful. This is going to be a tough film to review because I do think that the majority of people are going to dislike it. And I don't think I would recommend it to very many people. It is slow. It is wordy. And I do think that a lot of people will think there is tons of terrible acting and it looks cheap and and I understand that complaint. This movie was recommended to me by a subscriber of mine named That Shot 8. I decided to go into this completely blind knowing absolutely nothing about it and I enjoyed it. I think that the director here shows lots of promise instead of using quick cuts and you know back and forth. He has a lot of long stationary shots, you know, that let the characters play off of each other. And I respected those decisions because it makes the conversations feel more natural. Um, things that I really enjoyed in this movie were the music, not only the score, but some of the song selections. There aren't a lot, but the ones that are here, I do feel like they play off the scenes well. And the score can get a tad repetitive because it is kind of looped a little bit, but I did like it so it never became overbearing or overstaying its welcome. The opening title card is cleverly taken off the screen somehow, and I liked that. Uh, some of the kills in this movie are a little bit more graphic than I expected them to be. But as I said, this movie is very slow. There isn't a lot of kills. Um, another thing that I really enjoyed about this film was the intriguing nature of the killer. Like, the killer in this film didn't just seem like you know, it wasn't, it was definitely not like a Michael Myers where he was just out butchering anyone who got in his way or Jason Voorhees or something like that. And he wasn't, you know, a character that had clear motives. Like, you know, I want revenge on all the whores in the city because they made fun of me when I was a kid, whatever. Their, his intentions are super unclear and sometimes he kills certain people and sometimes he doesn't and you're not really sure why. And it's intriguing. I don't know if this is something that you can find a pattern in with multiple viewings. Um, I paid pretty close attention. I, did, I thought maybe I was kind of seeing a pattern, but then that pattern fell apart towards the end. So I'm not really sure what it was. It could just be random bullshit, and I tried not to read into things all that much, but I was intrigued. Um, this movie kind of had a maniac-type feeling to it, just a guy driving around the city looking for victims. But as I said, the difference between that is in the original and in the remake of Maniac, he's just pretty much killing everybody he comes in contact with. But in this movie, it's just seemingly random. And I don't know why that intrigued me as much as it did. I guess I just need to know why. Why would you do such a thing? Um, one thing that I definitely wasn't a huge fan of, and this is just a personal preference here, was the boyfriend of the main girl. His name was Marcus in this film. And I get that he's a character that I'm supposed to dislike, but... His believability to me <laughs> was just not there. And as I said, I think this is just personal. Now, I do know that girls date fucking assholes. And I know that hot girls can date guys that are way beneath them. And they can let them treat them like shit. But I don't know. 
in here was just annoying me. I just kept saying like, really this girl and this guy and she's letting him treat him like this. As I said, I know that does happen in real life, but I guess I go to the movies for escapism. But maybe that was the aim, right? He's supposed to be an asshole who's pissing me off and I want him fucking dead. And that's the way I felt. So I guess goal accomplished. Another pet peeve I have in these kinds of, in, in movies, in this, I feel like this is happening a lot lately and I'm not really sure why. But characters, while being attacked, don't scream. Don't scream for help. Now, there's a little part of me being like, is this a budget problem? Like, they're filming in a backyard of somebody's house at night, and they're like, don't scream because people will call the cops. We don't have filming permits. Like, I really am starting to believe that's the reason. <laughs> because somebody's attacking you and you're like next door to people and you're outside, why would you not yell? That just makes zero sense. Like natural reaction. It would go against everything in you to not to yell and scream for help. So I, I don't know why we're seeing so much of this. I, I have to believe what I said is true. Um, so yeah, I mean... If you're into more slow burn uh, type thrillers uh, and want to see kind of a new reason to be afraid of going outside your house, <laughs> which is probably not a great thing. People are already too afraid of everything. Um, but I did. I, 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 do en I did enjoy this, but it, it would be a hard recommendation unless these things sound appealing to you.